All right, so shifting topics here, I want to talk about some concrete things that we want to do. Now, if we keep talking about SEO and its relationship with SEM, which is marketing, and previously I mentioned the concept also of content marketing, the big idea that comes across then is content. What is the content that you're putting on your website or on your social media to get you traffic? Because it's almost circular logic. I want more traffic to my website. I'll get more traffic to my website when I have traffic to my website. Well, that's a catch-22. I want more traffic, but I need more traffic to get more traffic. Okay. Well, the way you break that cycle is to create content. Content uh, that goes out into the world, that goes out to the search engines that they find that then gets you more traffic. We've talked about, uh, about that, how uh, it's about content. So I'm going to pull up a couple of excerpts from from the from one of the books that I recommend remember in the syllabus there are a couple of suggestions for books in this class I'm gonna pull up a couple of um, concepts a couple of excerpts from the SEO book let's see So there is a chapter in the book that talks about um, the concept of backlinks. What is a backlink? Basically, it is a link from any website to your website. Some other website linking to your website, it's a backlink. The other term is incoming link, inbound link. Make some notes here. So backlinks, also known as inbound links, incoming links, links to your site. Because the search engines have to deal with so many billions of websites nowadays, they have to get smarter. Bing and Google have to get smarter to show a good page of results. One of the things that the search engines look at is they analyze your site in totality and they have the ability to see what are, what are the websites that link to your website backlinks. And so if we have quality websites linking to my website, that will help me, that will increase my ranking. Um, this has been evolving because in the old days the search engines looked at this, but in the old days they weren't smart enough to discern a good page from a bad page very well. So in the old days, a technique was I would buy a website at, at, at a company, at a provider, and I would buy also three more. And then I would link all three of those together. I bought them all, I can link them all because I can design them and control them. So I would have all of these links together, all these great backlinks. And in the old days that would work because the search engines weren't as smart. But now the search engines are very smart. And so it'll see that that is a link building scheme that is fake, that is black hat. And if you do any black hat techniques and the search engines find out, suddenly your ranking goes down really bad. And it could be very hard to get out of that hole of negative SEO. So you don't want to create a bunch of your own websites and link them all together. That's not good anymore. Question. Um, now, you're talking about outside links, but what about linking from page to page? Or as an example, on my blog, that sometimes I'll create a link to a site on a another page. On uh, from one page to another page of your site, that's perfectly fine. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Internal links are just fine. They scrutinize external links. They scrutinize links from other sites. And if it's your own sites, they consider that a link building scheme. And that's what you want to avoid. So I'll say up here, avoid linking your own sites, your own external sites together, especially if irrelevant sites, if they are irrelevant sites. I created a site for realty, and I created a site for bakeries, and I created a site for dog walking. And I connected all three of those. There's no relation to them. Just because I've got three backlinks 
to my sites, that doesn't matter. They're not related. The search engines, look at that. The search engines are running 24 hours a day with rooms full of computers processing everything. And they can look at all of this stuff in seconds, milliseconds. And they can see these seven sites are all linked together. And it looks like all three of them are owned, I mean all seven of them are owned by the same company. Or all seven of them are edited from the exact same location, from the same IP address. They can analyze all of that and they can make these determinations. This is a link building scheme. And as I've said previously though, the search engines have to operate in the philosophy of guilty until proven innocent. Shoot first, ask questions later. The search engines have to be that way because there's so much spam out there, so much, so many bad websites bringing down the quality of the internet. So the search engines have to, you know, be very harsh. And if you're engaging in any of these black hat techniques or maybe even sometimes gray hat techniques, that could hurt your website. It could hurt your ranking, and it could be very hard to get out of that negative, you know, that negative column, that negative SEO hole. And so the book goes on to say, I want quality websites linking to my site. And it goes on to say, the best backlinks are those, well, before I get to that, the opposite is also true. Low quality websites linking to my website decreases my ranking. Let's say I did not create a bunch of websites. Let's say for whatever reason, uh, here's a tangible example. Uh, you can go online and buy subscriptions or buy software that will create a thousand backlinks for you. You know, it can create hundreds of websites and hundreds of links to you, and it's very affordable to do all of that. But that is bad. You don't want to create artificial websites to link back to your site. You don't want to engage in buying content or buying software that does this for you. You can buy this, you know, browsing around online online link building software don't get that don't get this because that software creates a hundred websites a hundred irrelevant websites linking to you bad the search engines will see why are all of these weird different websites linking all to this one website why are all these websites about this content that doesn't relate linking together and linking to this main website must be spam site let's decrease them Again, I, don't, I believe you that you're not a spammer, but the search engines won't. And so don't engage in that. And I used to have someone that would come into my, this class a few years ago, and um, we would have lecture and then lab time and break and such, and I would remember him leaning over to people and saying, hey, I know this software that can really help you. It's helped me, and it, it makes a lot of great links and such. It's really affordable. Follow my affiliate link. So he was trying to sell that bad software in this class. So when he told people and then he left, and then I would tell the person, uh, don't listen to him, that software is not so good for you. So he hasn't been around my class anymore, thankfully. But um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to give the search engines any, um, any inclination that you're, or any proof that you're a bad website. Because unfortunately, you, you run with a bad crowd, then you're the part of the bad crowd. And you may do that unwittingly, but that's why I'm telling you now. Good websites linking to you help you. Bad websites linking to you hurt you. And so this goes on to say, um, if I cannot use automated link building tools, how can I get enough links to rank well? Uh, he goes on to ask you, do you believe your page deserves to rank well based on the quality of your content and the authority of your site? So remember, we had longevity, authority, content those three pillars. The search engines want to rank websites better that have longevity, authority, and content. So here, do you think you're going to get good results if you don't have those? Obviously, I can't do much about longevity unless my site does exist for a long time. But coupling that with uh, authority and content, I can make up for it. So basically, for a page to rank well on your site, you need to make sure it deserves to rank well in terms of the content. So other examples and so forth. Um, again, pick up the book on your own. It's not that. It's not that um, expensive. This is the uh, SEO uh, twenty fifteen and beyond. Yes. Um, do you have control over backlinks? Back because 
this as an example of a friend of mine, a competitor to a friend of mine who has backlinks to her website and to find out they're from some Russian place mm -hmm. that is linking to a yeah. pornographic website. We do have control about that. We'll get to it very soon, but basically that's called, uh, that's called uh, disavowing backlinks. It is in the handout number three, which we'll look at, but definitely, because what's the point of knowing about the bad links if we can't do anything about it? We can do something about it. So then here the author goes on to say, the very best backlinks you can get to your site are the ones you do not create. These are backlinks from other sites where you did not request the link, nor did you have any say in the anchor text that is used in the link. So what that's saying is the best links to my site that really help my search engine results are those that I did not ask for, that I did not pay for, that I did not create. Those are also those are the holy grail, and those are the most difficult to get. Because how am I going to get links without asking for them? I have so many contacts in this business that I could ask on their, their webmaster, hey, why not link to my site? And in the old days, that was something that was done, link exchanges. I'm going to add a link to your website if you add a link to my website. That's what used to work. But then that was abused because then you just were link hungry and you wanted to get as many links as you could from irrelevant sites again. Well, I don't know that many other dentists' websites that I can link from their site to my site. And we're in competition, so of course I can't ask. And so, okay, how do I get back links if I can't pay for them, if I, can, if I can't create them, if I can't ask for them? The best way to get this type of link is to develop content that your visitors love and want to share with others. So that's why now social media is such the big aspect of SEO nowadays. It's not just great that you've got a website. You've got to have a website with great content like a blog so that that can get shared over to Twitter, to Facebook, Instagram, whatever. And those links from those websites coming back to you, those are backlinks. Traffic back to your website because of that blog post you shared. Or maybe as it builds, some somewhat competitor looks is writing a blog post, let's say, and you've got a great article on your site. And they write their article, and they put a link from their article back to your website, back to your article. That's a backlink as well. Think about it in these terms. Uh, if you ever had to write a big old paper in, in high school or college, let's say a 10-page paper, in college especially, and you're going to turn that in, and you turn it in without the works cited page, without the bibliography, you turn in a big old paper without a bibliography, the paper goes in the trash and gets you an F, because you did not specify where you got your knowledge from. And especially as a student, you are not smart enough to have invented all of this body of knowledge for that 10 pages on your own. You didn't do all of those experiments yourself. You didn't, you know, interview all of those scientists yourself. You got some information from somewhere. You went to the library, you went to Wikipedia, you went somewhere, you got information. And to try to turn in a paper without any work cited, any bibliography, that's plagiarism. You did not invent all that knowledge. So let's say you do do a great paper and you put in a bibliography. Well, what you've done is you've chosen sources that you feel really bolster your claim for your paper. I've chosen this journal, and I've chosen that dissertation, and I've synthesized it into my own knowledge. Basically, I'm vouching for the knowledge of those others. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants on my paper. Backlinks, in a sense. I've said, that particular work over there is really good. It helps my position, my, my paper. In terms of SEO, I've got all these great articles on my blog, and I'm getting traffic to them. I'm getting links to them. I'm getting these other websites linking to my blog because they think mine is great content. My blog has great stuff that bolsters their content. So creating content. And this chapter is really good in, in giving you, again, concrete examples of what to do. I'll mention several of these and which ones I recommend and, and which ones I don't as much. But here's one, infographics. It's better to show you what it is than kind of explain it. You've probably seen these, but I'll show it to you like this. If you'd like to go to this website, go to pinterest.com slash Mosher13. This is a colleague of mine. He was a student. Now he's got his own 
web design company. He's on Insta, uh, he's on Pinterest. If you haven't used Pinterest, it's another social network. You share content, usually pictures. You organize them into pin boards, so you sort of organize them into topics. So another social network to to use and uh, get traffic from. So his profile, Pinterest.com slash Mosher13. Uh, that's Chuck. He's got these various boards, infographics, cool photos, great web design, etc. He's got 2,000 infographics in there, so we'll see examples in a moment and so forth. But look at this. He's doing pretty well on Instagram. He's got 33,000 and a half followers. 33,000 people are looking at him on Instagram. When he posts something on Instagram, that could again perhaps get you traffic because the more followers you get, the more real followers you get. Question? No? Oh, Instagram, Pinterest, yes. Yes. All of the networks work the same. The more followers you get, the more real followers you get out of that. And in the social media class, I talk about basically thinking about things in terms of 1%. 1% of all your followers are your real followers, the ones that are really going to follow through, buy your product, read your posts, subscribe to you, whatever. So if I've got 100 followers, what's 1% 1 of 100? One. One follower out of those 100 could be the one that really follows through and buys your product, donates, etc. Now that's a very, very conservative estimate of 1%. You could be you could have a great company that it's more like 20%, 50%, 80%, sure. You won't know that until you get online and start being active on social media, but if you go with the metrics of 1%, so out of 33,000, 1% of that is like, uh, I don't know, 3,000, 3, 300 or something. So that's that could be enough to really build um, a business on top of. Uh, now. Pinterest is possibly going to really be forcing me to log in and such, but I'll try to show this without logging in. Uh, he's got a board here of all about infographics, and basically these are graphical representations of complex content. Uh, for example, this graphic here could have been a very boring PowerPoint presentation, but it's got a little bit of design. Yeah, I won't be able to see much until I log in. Pinterest has really kind of closed the door on that. But uh, these, these are graphics that uh, could have been a very boring chart, and instead they've got some design and some interesting graphics and such. These infographics, you've probably seen them before. You didn't know what they were called, perhaps, but they're just graphical representations of data this. So this is about something for millennials, and it's talking about it's people born within this time, and, and uh, here's one about using texts effectively. Like this one, how much data is that? So we've heard of the term maybe kilobyte and megabyte and such, but here is a representation about, well, one kilobyte is this number of books. One megabyte is that number of seconds of video. One terabyte is this many DVDs. So instead of it being a really boring chart, it's a little more graphically designed. This is very popular, this type of content like this. This is like a list of all of the ports that you can plug stuff into. That stuff gets shared all over the place. The perfect password. Oh, I want to know about that because I've got a weak password. And the evolution of uh, social media and such. So that could be boring information, but if you design something, the point of that is I'm creating content, putting it on my website or Twitter, whatever, so that more people share it. It goes off to more Twitter users, more Facebook users, etc., and that gives me traffic, backlinks to my site. I might have designed a great infographic and someone borrowed it and put it on their website. You might think, oh, they stole my content. No, if you design it in a way that gets you traffic back to your website, like you put a watermark on it. Again, I can't exactly show it, but usually these have a link attached to it or a water 
mark on it so that there's branding to get you back to your site. It's okay if, if someone else used it and reused it and passed it on. That's free marketing for you. Could be traffic for you. Infographics are very cool, but they are, uh, they do take effort to create. If you're not artistically inclined, it may be problematic to create them, but think about this. Think about searching uh, infographic template, infographic maker, info infographic generator. Think about searching that and seeing how many are free or maybe not that expensive. And so this is a way, a way how could I possibly make in infographics? Let's say the realty company. In my uh, realty company, I'm thinking about writing in the blog. And in the blog, I'm going to be writing about how, the st how it's a buyer's market. I want to target, you know, uh, young couples that, you know, they're, what do they call them, dinks, double income, no kids. Uh, young couples, they both have an income, and I want to get them a great house. So I could write a blog post, which, you know, uh, might be a little dry, but what if I put in also an infographic showing pie charts and a, a cool little graphic that I showed about the US and how our market here is the best one for buyers and the one over there is worse for buyers. So if I do something like that, it might get shared, it might get then spread out through social media and might get me traffic. What you could also do is go to the website fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R, two R's. Basically, this is these are this is people selling their services for five dollars a shot. Design me an infographic for five dollars. Now you do get what you pay for, but if you go here, let's say, what are you looking for? Infographics. Create infographic. Uh, let's see what that one is. Create infographic. So here's a bunch of people from this company, that company, this company. They're all doing it for five dollars. So Psy Consultants, Jenna Jenny, Danu, Danukzi, Nimaran, Khan, one, two, three. Okay, they've all seemed to be able to make infographics. They're all five dollars. Well, what's what's the good one? Well. This one's been purchased 1,000 times, this one's 1,000, this one's 543, this one's 59 times, 158. So the point is I'm going to look at the ratings. I'm going to look at how many sales they've had, what are the ratings, what are people's opinions and comments. Just like I look up a restaurant ratings on, online before I go to the restaurant, there's reviews for everything nowadays, graphic designers, for example. So I'm just going to pick one randomly, and I'm going to scroll down and pick this one, Quality Master. 25 buyers, 4.8 rating, level 2 seller, 99% positive, average response time, 11 hours, and basically this is what you get out of those $5. Some of them are more complex, saying that for $5 you get this, add 5 more dollars you get that, add 5 more you get this, kind of like, um, kind of like uh, Kickstarter campaigns where you add a little bit more and you get this and that. Let's see if I find any like that. Uh, they all, yeah, like this one. They'll give you all the original files apparently, which is always good in case you want to edit it yourself or go off with someone else later. Uh, average response time, five hours, 97% rating, 65 buyers. I would want to look perhaps what are some of the negative responses. Oh, here, here we go. These are extra gigs. If you want it done in one day, just add $10. If you want for commercial use, add $10. Oh, so this version of the $5 one is not for commercial purposes, apparently. So I might not want to do that. Work completed in 12 hours, add $20, and so forth. Negative reviews, poor experience, not good. Well, those negative ones aren't negative enough to maybe really deter me. But uh, I'm bringing this up because you might not be a graphic designer, you might not know anyone that is, but I want to create infographics or other sorts of things. You can go over to fiverr.com and maybe find someone that can do it affordably. That's one of the suggestions from the book. 
I highly recommend that one. Create that content, share it, that gets you more traffic. Any questions on infographics? Number two on scripts, I don't recommend this one. This is much more complex. This is sort of giving the example of you being, like let's say a nutritional website. You want to get hired as a nutritionist. On my website, I'm going to give away these free like, you know, nutrition calculators and weight managers and such. That's very complex. That requires a lot of programming and coding to get any of that kind of stuff to work. You might find templates and stuff such online, but they may not be customal, customizable enough for you. And just being paranoid, they might have malicious code because you're putting someone else's code on your website. That might do something negatively. So I don't recommend number two, really. Number three, I recommend the modern version of this. Not exactly forums. I'm recommending comments. Comments. Here it's saying, run a forum on your website. I don't recommend that as much anymore because with forums, a place for people to comment on your website, you now have to become a comment moderator, a comment cop. You now have to keep track of who's enrolled and who's commenting and keep the bad stuff out because spam bots are running 24 hours a day looking for websites to comment on about anything and inject their spam comments there. It happens. It's happened to one of my clients years ago. And so now you've got to become a spam cop on your own website instead of running your website and running your business. So I don't really recommend forums, per se, on your website anymore. I recommend the opposite. I recommend you engaging in forums or comments. Uh, here's a site I like to give the example of browneyedbaker.com. This is, you know, a bakery, baking website, food and recipes and such. They've, they're a blog website. What's the purpose of their, of their online presence? To give away free recipes? Sure. But they've got ads all over the place. So the purpose, one purpose you could say about this online presence is to make money off the ads. That's how people can make money online. Put ads on your website, get people to read your website, visit your website. You could get, make money off your website. And so this latest article, Tortellini in Parmesan cream sauce with spinach and sun-dried tomatoes. There's that article, great pictures, I want to read it. It's got the recipe, all this great free info, what's the catch? Again, there's ads and such. I might be in the look, on the look for a new car, so I might click there, and then they get something out of that. But um, for what I want to say right now is there is a section down here for people to comment. So uh, here's six comments so far. Vivian, Lynn, Marla, and Dietra. At the moment, Vivian and Lynn are doing it right. How can you tell? How are they using comments, forums, right in terms of backlinks? It might not be obvious, but Lynn and Vivian have a link on their name. Marla and Myra and Dietra don't. If I put my mouse on their name, that's a link back to her website. If I put my mouse on Mira or Myra, there's no link back to her website. So Vivian and Lynn are doing it right in that they are commenting, and they are not being an obvious spammer in saying, great recipe, here's mine, and then a link back to their website. They are contributing to the conversation, meaning that they are not getting removed from the comments, they're contributing to the conversation. Their link there is active. This is a popular website. People could then see her, read what she wrote, etc. Link, click there, back to her own site. Piggybacking on someone else's website. Commenting on someone else's website, giving yourself a link back. That is a very legitimate thing to do. If you're within the, the rules, of course. Don't act like a spammer. Don't beg for these links. Don't get yourself kicked out of the comment, add a relevant comment that is part of the conversation, and most of the time you have an easy way to add your own backlink right here. Leave a comment, 
name, mail, website comment, and notice website is not required. So people might say, it's not required, I won't add it. You want to add that. You want to fill in your name and your email and your website and your comment. And go to different people's websites relevant to yours, maybe competitors, maybe not, but relevant websites, comment, be part of the conversation, add your website there, and that could bring you backlinks, more traffic. So that's my variation on what the book recommends about forums. Don't do it on your own website. Um, do it on someone else's website. Because if you've got it on your own website, there is some value to it, but you've got to be on top of the spam. And there are p filters and plugins that will help you, but they're not always going to be foolproof. Because you know what they say, you can't make anything foolproof because there are so many ingenious fools. And so, I would rather go off to someone else's website, comment there, get traffic back to mine. forums, free downloads, free downloads. So that's related to that actual article right there. This is a recipe. It looks like a really good recipe. It doesn't look that complicated. They wrote about it. They've written a bunch of content that the search engines will find. You know, this, this stuff before the actual recipe is not just fluff. It's there to help get search engine traffic. All of these keywords. Remember the the basic keywords and long tail keywords they're included they're sprinkled in through these through these introductory introductory paragraphs and the good stuff that what i really care about perhaps is the recipe right there and i can easily email it print it share it on social media giving away something for free i've got this fictional business victor's bakery i want to sell more cupcakes through my, through my website. Let's say I have a buy now button on my website. Well, it's very easy for someone to follow me on Twitter, to comment. It's much harder for, to actually sell anything online or get that donation or get people to read your blog and such. But giving away something for free here and there entices people, shows your authority, builds your content, maybe gets you traffic from shares and such. And I'm not going to give away my prized recipe for that, for those, uh, uh, you know, chocolate chip cookies that my company's famous for. I'm going to give away a variation of it. And um, that'll get me more fame when someone shares that on their Facebook. Notice how here, these stats, it's showing a lot of activity on Pinterest compared to Facebook. Even though Facebook's the larger network, largest network in the world, Pinterest is the one that's getting more activity. Twitter doesn't disclose their numbers anymore, unfortunately, so we don't know. There's Google Plus and such. Email it, share it. Posts that include lists. So you're going to think about blogging. You're going to think about it hard and seriously. You should be blogging. Every website could and should have a, have a blog. Even your own company that you think it might not matter. Because that's you creating content on a regular basis for the search engines to find. When someone searches something and you've got a blog about that, you could be found. So, for example here. I searched, what is pulque? I heard one of my coworkers talking about it. I'm going to look it up myself when I have a moment. What is pulque? So I get a quick definition from Wikipedia, a Mexican alcoholic drink made from fermented sap from the maguey plant. Then there's another article here, Wikipedia, pictures, and oh, look at this, our client's blog post on that topic. The third result is that, above the BBC. So, creating content, oh, the original energy drink, huh? I wouldn't go that far, but um, that's why they're not above us. Okay, so you create content, you create blog posts, you create blog posts like of lists, top 10 this, 
top five WordPress plugins, top seven destination locations. I'm a realtor. Uh, and I'm trying to sell houses, sure, but I'm not always going to be 100% on message all the time. I want to sprinkle in some ancillary things. I want to put in once in a while that article about top 10 world destinations to retire. You know, top seven uh, summer vacation spots. Now, I'm not selling any properties in Hawaii, but it's, it's still interesting content that could go out there related to properties and realty and such, and it could get shared, especially with good photos, good content. You can show an example about this over on, um, let's see, randomly here, investorjunkie.com. They're a company that is about investing. They want you to hire them to run their to run your investments and retirement and all of that. But they've got articles. You can call it literally blogs, articles, posts, whatever. It's content. So they want you to, to hire them to run your retirement. But they're going to give away a bunch of free stuff like, okay, I think I can do it myself. Let me read all about taxes or retirement or real estate. So I'm interested here in retirement. Here's all the articles about retirement. Ten financial milestones to achieve in your 40s and 50s. Three strategies to really make your money last longer. Okay, that sounds interesting. I'm going to read that. So it doesn't have to be top 10, top 12, top 7, top 3 is fine, top 2, I suppose. Any number. It doesn't matter the number. The point of it is that it's digestible chunks. I can deal with this. This could be a very dry topic. It's broken down to three things that I can do. I can wrap my, round of, my mind around three things. Notice this blog. It's got a big headline, catches your attention, a little bit of preview stuff, internal link. Again, if you take the blog class, we really dissect the good blog and, and ideas and how to write it in the blog class. I think it's being offered next month or in two months or so. Look for that. But um, we've got uh, here, it doesn't even have to literally be numbered, one, two, three, whatever. We've got don't quit working during retirement. Generate more revenue through growth investments. Find investments with guaranteed rate of return. Five considerations in deciding whether to buy long-term car insurance. Five tips for rebalancing your retirement portfolio. These list types of posts are very popular. You've probably read one or two or ten of them in a row. Once you read one, you want to read another because they're so interesting. And what you're doing there is eventually I'm figuring out, yeah, this is interesting. I'm kind of learning and I'm trying it on my own and making mistakes. Maybe I will reach out to them. Maybe I will buy that book or that lecture or, get, or hire them. That's the point of all of this content, to build your authority, to get that conversion. So list posts. And then it goes on to other examples, you know, skip a couple of these. Forum participation, that's kind of what I mentioned earlier. YouTube and other videos, that's a big topic right there. Video marketing, that's the next generation, that's the next frontier. Because text is effective and easy, but then there are those that are or easier. And there are those that are going toward video blogging you know, short videos. You don't have to be doing 30-minute professional types of videos. You could do five minutes, one minute. You could do the, you could do the, you know, the, the, the stock market minute. And in one minute, talk about the stock market. It doesn't have to be very, very, very complex. What can you get across in one minute? But as you build this portfolio, once a month, I'm going to do a 30-second video. I could think to possibly do that. And I don't need professional quality and all of that. My, my phone is an HD recorder. This can record really good quality and, and yeah, just having the tools doesn't make you a good you know, producer. It does take practice and education and so forth. But guess what? I'm teaching a class on YouTube, a two-day class on Friday next month. Uh, it's part two of the social media class. Part one is this month, part two is next month. And I talk about YouTube two days on that because one day we talk about creating the YouTube videos, 
in part two, we, uh, day two of that, we talk about creating the YouTube channel and and optimizing it because there's a whole all, also there's YouTube SEO that we need to take into account nowadays. So here, this is a thing to, to, to talk about, to think about videos. Let me show you an example about how my company does that. So we've got the website pmdinteractive.com, we've got a blog, we've got this article on using the social network Peach, uh, it's got some activity online and such and traffic. And so you click to read and it's got these these uh, you know these keywords and such. It's broken down into chunks of uh, information. This has got to be updated because things have changed. But then there's a video at the end also. And this one has done pretty well on on YouTube. This one's got oh it's already a thousand eight one thousand one hundred eighty nine views. So um, two ways to to get this info: read it. Or, or watch it. Those that want to read it, there, there it is for them to read it. Those that want to or can listen to it and such, there's an audio version. 12 minutes long and, and it goes on to basically show you, you know, this is the on Peach screen, social network. At the moment, what to it's do, only what to click on, all of that, username, and right now it's how to a set up an account and so a full, full name. process of setting up an account. Old text. And it says, this Hi. takes work. Now try this is effort. Photo. Okay. You know, it well, took got the, the photo 20 minutes to record here, it, and it took another photo. hour to edit it. This. And it condenses There's down to 12 minutes. At the bottom there, you might have Video production is those. always complex and, and time-consuming. Basically, the amount of time that you spent recording is just half the time you actually spent creating. That shows up between the double the amount of time, really, because to edit out the mistakes and to make it really polished and add the music or however complex you want to be, that takes a while. And there's nothing wrong with doing talking head videos. And there's nothing wrong with you know handheld videos where you're recording the boss and all of that. If you invite, but if your competition is much more professional, so again, this is not just a advantage. It is a big topic of video sort of creation, but the best advice I can give you is this has an uh, have good, which just swipes us have good lighting and have good audio. Duh, that's what a video is. And, um, Sight and sound, we've got isn't tell it? A friend, what I mean friend, is, find friends. if you're going to record well, me talking about a topic where I'm standing right here, is not a good place. On the Peach, ambient light on me right now is not so good. Simply type in it's, their username. It's still going to appear very dark and such. To get off if I turn with, on more lights and if I get uh, in front so of me a better light source like I'm this and record Peach on VM Campus, much bad. It'll say the second thing about that is you'll to sound be able to better. see each other's faces. If I'm going to record you while you're sitting there and I'm standing here, so I'm barely going to hear you. The microphone is barely going to hear you. There, it's waiting. I need to get There's close. One you can add, of course. So getting close, good PMD amount of light. That's the big secret to video. Notice it is There's a lot of no nuances, spaces, of course. Just like a Twitter account. But if you are going to get into that topic of video production, it could be very effective. It's been sent over to the company account. Traffic over to the site. Inquiries on the request a quote page. That's the point of all of this to show our authority and our content, get traffic, get sales, get hired. And then there are other concepts there, Twitter, social media, etc., blogging. Again, this, these are just excerpts. I recommend that you check out the book on your own. But um, any general questions before we take our first break? Back to this, yes. Yeah, Periscope um, is live video, which that could be the next big thing besides YouTube video. YouTube video is, you know, traditional video is captured and edited and produced and set, you know, set in stone, and it, there's that effort. Uh, Periscope is part of the new generation of live streaming video. Periscope, Twitch TV, Ustream, Justin TV, all of these sites, Blab, they're all about live, what's going on right now, without editing, without a bunch of, uh, you know, a lot of flash, although there are very, some very good Periscope channels out there that are very polished. But Periscope is basically, you turn on the app, you start to record live at that moment. People come look at you right now live, ask you questions at that moment. It doesn't mention it in this book just yet. I do recommend it. I think it's very cool. It's less effort in about setting up a whole production, and it could have very direct, uh, 
you know, results because someone at that moment checks out your video, asks you a question, and you answer them right there. Oh yeah, we do sell that. Go check out this page on our site. So it's like it's live broadcasting, and everyone can do it, and it's free, completely free at the moment. Any other questions? Let's take our uh, first break. It's about 1.55-ish. We'll come back at 2.05, and then we'll um, look at some more things. We'll look at our document about backlinks.